Campbell is what we call slick. He knows all of the tricks, the turn of the shoulders, the short upper catch. Whereas Marquez is a basics technician, solid basically. He doesn't have all of those tricks. I think it would go to force Diaz possibly, but it should be a tremendous fight. And nothing would surprise me. But I think that they're both going to come out trying to be technical in the beginning. And as Diaz told us, when I find that I'm not winning a fight comfortably, I just start throwing punches. And that's what I think is going to happen and eventually. And then Marquez is going to start throwing punches. Meaning one way or another, it could be a, a tremendous fight. I think it's going to be a very exciting fight. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Juan Manuel Marquez and Juan Diaz. And you're going to see that 10-year age advantage for Diaz, though Marquez is not exactly a worn down 35. He's also got a one inch height advantage. He's got an arm length advantage of a half inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in a half pound under the lightweight limit. Diaz has gone up only four pounds and Marquez only five pounds overnight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. So one Manuel Marquez, one Diaz fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case it comes caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Now here's one of the most energetic fighters in the sport, Juan the Baby Bull Diaz. This is the way Diaz likes to fight. My style of boxing is the type that puts a lot of pressure. <laughs> And just where's my opponents now? Can you go with it? Can you stay with it? Round after round after round. The baby bull trying to finish off Coco. When people cheer me on for that split second after they announce my name. I get goosebumps all over my body. Now here I am in my hometown, the great city of Houston. Fans are getting their money's worth in a huge way. He can't bully the bull. He is just relentless. I am the best lightweight in the world. Not Juan Manuel Marquez or no other lightweight is going to stop me from proving that to the people and to the boxing world. The prediction for tonight is pain. Coming to the ring, Juan. Baby bull, you told me earlier that based on what you saw of Juan Diaz at the beginning of his career, you're very surprised he has made it as far as he has and become as good as he is. Why? Look, the fact it was easy to you, so precocious, that I was watching a 17 and 18 year old compete against fully grown men. Juan Diaz has shown as he's developed, especially in his last fight against Michael Cassides, a, not only a plan A, but a plan B. He's not just a simple pressure fighter. He can box in semicircles. He uses his jab well. He has fast hands. He, he can throw combinations and counter punch. He's developed into a multi-dimensional threat. The only thing he's missing, knockout power. Will the absence of knockout power, Emmanuel, penalize him against Marquez tonight? I do not think so. I don't think his power is that bad. It's just not no devastating one punch, punch in the pile, but he punches, I think, good, and he punches often enough, and he punches in bunches, so I think that would make up for that. I think that may be his advantage going down the stretch, is to just apply pressure, because fighting a technical fight, I think Marquez is just too much for him. So he's going to have to set a tempo, and the, and the volume of punches is going to have to be to his advantage. Indeed, that's the heart of the matter, because the challenge facing young Diaz tonight is how to outwork and out-energize the man who just might be the most skilled prize fighter in the sport. Marquez seizing the advantage in the center of the ring. Here comes the blood, and here comes the crowd on their feet. I'm going to demonstrate and prove that I'm the best peleador libra por libra. Juan Díaz is 50% Mexican and 50% American. And I'm 100% Mexican. Uppercut for Marquez. Left hook. Marquez looking to knock his man out. That's his Sunday punch. When he catches you with a hook clean, you gotta go. Juan Díaz is a peleador joven, a peleador fuerte. But what I have is the experience, the force, and the ganas to get out of the way, to win. His face is ripped open, and he wants to fight up. They trade shots. What a 
Dicen que el knockout llegó solo, pero también hay veces que hay que buscarlo y nosotros vamos a, a poner todo para, para que el knockout llegue. Coming to the ring, Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez. Max, in both his first and second fights against Manny Pacquiao, he won more rounds than Pacquiao. Do you think it's his holy grail to be seen as the number one fighter in the sport? Yeah, let me make the case that it is in fact Marquez who is the best pound for pound fighter in the sport. Manny Pacquiao has that distinction partly based on his win over Marquez. I would say many, if not most, in the hardcore boxing community feel Marquez may have won both those fights. Then Pacquiao moved up to lightweight, beat David Diaz. No one considered Diaz a top three or four lightweight and then moved up to welterweight and beat Oscar De La Hoya, a superstar, but no one considered Oscar a three or four, top three or four welterweight. Meanwhile, Marquez moved up to lightweight, knocked out the reigning lineal champion and certainly one of the best 135 pounders, Casamayor, and here tonight faces something Pacquiao's never faced. And in his prime, 135 pounder, among the very best in the world, young, energetic, bigger, and an excellent fighter. And Emmanuel, if he can get past the potential nightmare of Diaz tonight, he wants to fight the winner of Pacquiao Hatton at 140. Is he really big enough to move up another five pounds, or would that be tempting fate? Well, I think the main 140 pounder that he's going after is the guy who's been fighting so much at 26 and 30. So that switches Manny Pacquiao. So I would say we'll be fine. But Ricky Hatton is another thing. Ricky is a physically much stronger and tougher guy. I think Ricky, even though he may not punch as precision and be a little rough with his style of fighting, I think it would be a little too much for him probably. I don't think he could outbox Ricky that easy. Two great fighters ready in the ring. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the Toyota Center, Houston, Texas, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions is proud to present the main event of the evening, champion versus champion, sponsored by Tecate Cerveza con Caracter and Southwest Airlines No Hidden Fees. This contest scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA, the vacant WBO, and the IBO and Ring Magazine. Lightweight Championship of the World! Sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Executive Director William Kunz. At ringside, the three judges scoring, Max DeLuca, Queen Ford, and Levi Martinez. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, U.S. Army First Sergeant retired, Rafael Ramos. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world from Houston, Texas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, officially weighing 134, one half pounds. This two-time world champion has a professional record consisting of 34 victories, including 17 knockouts with only one defeat. From Houston, Texas, the reigning, defending, IBO lightweight champion of the world, El Torito, Juan Baby Bull Diaz. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver with red, Official weight, 134, one quarter pounds. A three-time world champion and future Hall of Famer. Has a professional record of 49 victories, including 36 knockouts, four defeats, and one bout even. De Ciudad de Mexico, the reigning, 